So a while back, Apex Legends had a Final Fantasy VII crossover event where players could pick up and use the Buster Sword in the match. It was fun, albeit a bit oppressive at times. But fun nonetheless. The sword's animations were clean and his melee mechanics combined with Apex's movement system felt very satisfying. After the event ended, not gonna lie, kinda missed it. So today in this video, I'm gonna attempt to recreate the feel of the Buster Source mechanics using Unity. But before we get into that, thanks to Game Maker for sponsoring today's video. Game Maker is a free 2D game engine designed with usability in mind. If you're new to video game development and looking for a place to start, or you're looking to make the next big 2D game, well, look no further. Game Maker offers a very clean, user-friendly interface, which I really appreciate. And on top of that, you can make a game without ever needing to code. You actually can choose to use the engine's proprietary language called Game Maker language, or use their visual option, or both. It's very flexible and multiple editors to work with the types of assets that you'll have in your project, such as sprites or tile sheets. Game Maker also has a very active community on social media, including Discord and Reddit, and a lot of popular 2D games were made using Game Maker. It's really quick and easy to get started. I was able to prototype this project in a very short amount of time. As I mentioned before, Game Maker is free for non-commercial use, and if you choose to go the commercial route, they offer a one-time payment for a perpetual professional license, meaning no monthly payments. Both the free and professional version can export to multiple platforms, including Windows, Mac, Linux, Web, iOS, Android, Android TV, and tvOS. And the Enterprise version even has console exporting. Download Game Maker using my link in the description and start making games today. And I look forward to playing your creations. And thanks again to Game Maker for sponsoring this video. All right, so first and foremost, I don't know too much about how Apex's version of the Source Engine works under the hood. Still, I'm mostly going off a of feel here, with the exception of a couple of values I was able to find online. Second, I'll be splitting the workflow into two parts, first creating the movement and then animating the sword. The first thing I did was set up the test environment, nothing too fancy, and then got to work setting up the player controls. There isn't anything really special about the camera setup other than the fact that for this project, I set it up outside of the player object. It has a script that handles following the player and looking around. I started with basic movement first, and use the rigid body component instead of a character controller. I haven't used rigid bodies much for first person movement, so I figured this would be a good place to practice. Rigid bodies move by applying force to them. Then Unity's physics engine takes over, unlike character controllers which move directly how you tell them to. Rigid bodies can sometimes behave unpredictably, and character controllers can feel a bit stiff or restricted. This is why in the previous video, I mentioned that I'm not really satisfied with how Zero's movement feels in certain situations because he's set up with a character controller. The player moves by applying a constant force to the object using force mode.force. This applies force to the rigid body, but only for that fixed frame, which makes it behave kind of like a character controller. After getting basic movement down, I moved on to jumping. Jumping was pretty easy to set up because rigid bodies manage gravity themselves, so you can easily make adjustments if needed. To get it to work, all I had to do was apply force upwards. Unlike walking around, this time I used force mode.impulse. This applies a force to the object in a more realistic fashion. And after it does, the physics engine takes over and handles the rest. Next, I added fatigue. In Apex and a few other games, once a player jumps, they enter a fatigue state. During that state, they can't jump with as much force as the initial one. So once the player jumps, a boolean is set to true and a timer starts once the player hits the ground and only ticks while they're in contact with the ground. During that time, if the player tries to jump, the force is set to a smaller amount. With the setup I had now, I had a good idea of how to add the next couple of mechanics. Sprinting was very easy to set up. It's just a boolean that gets set to true if the player presses the sprint key. While true, the force applied to make the player move is multiplied by a sprint force variable. Crouching, on the other hand, took a little more work. When the player presses the crouch key, they not only move slower, but also the player's object scale is halved on the y-axis. I end up smoothing out the transition later in the project. While testing these out, I ran into an issue. When trying to walk across a slope, the player wouldn't move at the intended speed. What's happening here is that the force making the player move is calculated under the assumption that the player is walking on a flat surface which means when walking up a slope, the player is actually trying to move into the slope. And when going down a slope, it's as if the player is taking short hops down it. To fix this, we need to calculate the angle of the slope that the player is on and use that to direct the force in the right direction. This took a little tweaking to find the right feel, but I eventually got it working. 
Next is sliding. In Apex, players can slide by hitting crouch while sprinting. The way I set this up was that once the player hits crouch while sprinting, some extra force is applied to the start of the sprint, followed by a fixed short period of time to keep the player sliding. Side note, I know in Apex players can't immediately go into a slide after starting a sprint because they have to take a couple of steps first to build up the speed, but I never got around to setting that up. So yeah. I also ended up adding a method to check the player's velocity when pressing crouch. That way the slide works more like in Apex where the player can go directly into a slide simply if they're moving fast enough. They don't necessarily have to be sprinting. Next is wall running. Having done this already in the Zero project, I didn't have to start from scratch. I just needed to tweak it to work with a rigid body instead of a character controller. And to be honest, it feels way better when done with a rigid body. To initiate a wall run, the game checks if there's a wall on either side of the player. After that, it pulls the player to the wall and calculates the direction to run. Once the direction is calculated, gravity is turned off and a constant force is applied to move the player along the wall. In addition to that, another force is also applied towards the wall to keep the player stuck to it as long as they're holding down forward. And if the player hits jump while wall running, they'll perform a wall run jump and from there can continue wall running. The final movement mechanic to be added was climbing. Compared to wall running, this one was much easier. If the player touches a wall that they're facing while airborne, they'll begin to move up the wall for a short period of time. I ran into an issue sometimes where the player gets stuck after climbing a wall because the code thinks that they're in the air when they're actually standing on something. This is because the function that checks the distance from the ground uses a ray cast that looks at a point directly underneath them. And sometimes the player object would physically be on the surface of the object, but off just enough where the ray cast would miss. With all of the movement mechanics added, I added some camera animations to handle bobbing, tilting, and the field of view during specific actions. And finally was able to add sword. I was both looking forward to and dreading this part because as I mentioned multiple times before, I'm not an animator. But before I jumped into it, I checked out how animators handled first person animations. And once I was feeling a bit more confident, I decided to go for it. Doing some research on the 12 principles of animation really helped here. I won't explain each one, but I'll point out a few of them as I move forward. After getting some footage from Apex to use for reference, a sword, and a player model, I got to work. The first thing I needed to do was cut off the arms of this mesh using an asset called FPS Mesh Tool. This saved me a lot of time, and it would have turned out better if the model had a higher poly count. I definitely saw other models, but the ones that I found weren't rigged. After importing the sword, I set up a second camera that could only see the arms, while the main camera can see everything else. This is a very simple method that is used a lot. Setting them up this way also keeps the arms from clipping through walls. I started with a simple idle animation. From here, I made an animation for walking, sprinting, crouching, crouch walking, and wall running. The attack animations were what I really wanted to get right. I started with the diagonal heavy attack. The footage helped me get the keyframes of the animation first, and then I went back and added in between frames as needed if Unity had a weird transition between the keyframes, which happened a lot. This was very tedious and took about an hour to finish this first animation, and I can only imagine how long it takes professional animators to make these types of animations. The four things I really wanted to nail were the anticipation, timing, follow through, and exaggeration of the attacks. Anticipation creates buildup. Timing refers to the speed of the action, follow through at the end sells the force of the action, and exaggeration makes it more visually appealing. They all work together to sell the force of the swing. Once this was done, I animated the horizontal heavy attack using the same principles. The light attacks are the same animations as the heavy attacks, but I removed some of the anticipation and follow through frames to make them feel faster and well, lighter. From here, using the same process, I animated the jumping attack, blocking, launch attack, and the dive attack from the LTM. For the crouch attack, I just reused the horizontal attack animation instead of the pushing attack from the game. To wrap things up, I set up some code to handle camera tilting during some of the attack animations, some particle slashes for the heavy attacks, post-processing effects, and threw it into a test environment just to get a change of scenery. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Working on this has helped me figure out how to fix certain issues with the Zero project. 
and there were some other things that i'd like to add but i never got around to including such as the limit break atb gauge ui sound effects etc and while working on this i really got curious what if cloud was a playable legend in apex what would his passive be would his tack be the launch what about the limit break would that be his ultimate or could it be something else from his moveset what about using magic or materia if you're curious as well or even about other characters being played with these mechanics let me know down in the comments and maybe i'll do one more of these where i finish this project and make it into some sort of mini game thanks again to game maker for sponsoring this video click my link in the description or the pinned comment to download game maker for free and start creating today i'll be releasing this build over on patreon and speaking of patreon big thank you to all of my patrons so that's going to be it for this one thank you so much for watching i know i didn't have a webcam during the outro this time but your boy a little sick so bear with me if you enjoyed the video leave a like and if you're feeling super generous how about subscribing but i hope you all have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one peace